All right, topic 5.1, introduction to soil systems. Uh, so our first significant idea is that the soil system is a dynamic ecosystem that has inputs, outputs, storages, and flows. Uh, so using that sort of system model to investigate soils. Our next significant idea, the quality of soil influences the primary productivity of an area. Uh, pretty intuitive, right? Better soil grows better crops. Uh, so our first understanding, the soil system may be illustrated by a soil profile that has a layered structure. Um, so you could use a mnemonic device to remember the order of the horizons. Um, sometimes you'll actually see an additional horizon here between the A and B horizon uh, called the E horizon, um, which sort of reaccumulates materials, um, actually loses materials from A, um, which then reaccumulate down in the B horizon. Um, you can kind of see that E horizon being a little bit more washed out. Um, some storages in the soil system include organic matter, uh, organisms, living things, nutrients, NPK, minerals, air, and water. Uh, and a rough breakdown of the relative proportions. And different soils might have different amounts, right? If your soil is more compact, you might have less air, uh, potentially less water as well. I mean, in the desert, very, very little water in the soil. Um, though if you go deeper, sometimes you can actually find a little bit of moisture trapped down there. Transfers in the soil uh, include biological mixing and leaching. Um, so here we see some examples of biological mixing uh, with the soil food web, all the different organisms um, in that food, we food web. Um, and then you might notice actually it's, it's with insects, right? You end up with pretty high trophic levels. I mean, this bird is actually in the fourth or fifth trophic level. Uh, looks like fifth trophic level, right? All the insects eating other insects. Um, and then we have leaching as well. So leaching, as you see in this beautiful cartoon, is when you have excessive precipitation, um, which then leaches or brings the uh, minerals and other nutrients down through the soil. Um, leaching also can um, be worse with um, like heavy chemicals and stuff in the water. So that's another negative impact of acid rain is that it can increase leaching, um, taking nutrients away, and then also moving the nasty stuff through the soil as well. Um, and then of course, soil texture will affect your leaching rates. Um, if you have bigger pores, bigger spaces in between the sediments, then it can flow a lot faster versus clay, really dense, small particles. Uh, that's why if you build your house on clay, you tend to have a lot of flooding issues. Not a good idea. Um, Okay, inputs of organic matter include leaf litter or detritus, um, and then inorganic matter from parent material, aka bedrock, um, precipitation, and energy. And then outtakes uh, include uptake by plants and then soil erosion, of which there's a few different kinds we get to in the third subtopic. Uh, some transformations in the soil include decomposition, breaking down that detritus into uh, its component nutrients. Uh, and then weathering, which is breaking down the parent material, that rock into um, smaller rocks, or sometimes even different substances like limestone actually will dissolve uh, in slightly acidic rain, um, break those carbonate bonds, and then actually bubbles, releases little CO2 bubbles. It's a little nice field test for geologists. Uh, and then nutrient cycling. We see uh, some good examples of nutrient cycling here as um, all the different organisms help to move that stuff around. Um, the structure and properties of sand, clay, and loamy soils differ in many ways. Um, so we could look at some of those. Uh, it's clay soils tend to have a higher nutrient content than sandy soils. The clay actually can help um, sort of like actually like bond to the um, minerals because it's smaller versus sand where they sort of just can't, I mean, sand's basically just quartz. Quartz is just basically tiny little rocks. Um, drainage, so sandy soils obviously drain really well. Clay soils hold water, as I was saying before, right? They kind of differentiate drainage and water holding capacity. So you actually can get a point usually for mentioning each, right? It drains water well, which is good. And then it also retains water because if it drains too well, then you know um, a lot of plants don't grow well in sand because all that water just goes right away. Uh, air spaces, obviously related to water drainage. Um, the amount of life in there, biota, might be different. 
um, and then the potential to hold organic matter. And so we say loam is kind of the mixture of clay and silt and sand that provides the best um, composition for farming, basically. Um, so hopefully you know how to use these soil texture triangles. I love the ones where it actually shows the angle um, with the uh, with the numbers here. So you can follow really easily which way to, to go along the line. So if I was looking at uh, say 50% sand and say 30% silt, I could follow both of those lines to about here. That would still be a loamy soil. Um, so some of your applications and skills, including include to outline the transfers, transformations, inputs, outputs, flows, and storages within soil systems. Uh, one classic uh, example of this was to outline the, uh, I believe it was transfers of like decomposition and leaching in the A horizon, which sounds a little overwhelming, but if you just think about the A horizon on the top, decomposition comes from all the dead plants above the A horizon. So you draw decomposition with an arrow down to the A horizon. Um, and then leaching, as we remember, is when there's too much rain. So that brings stuff away from the A horizon. So you draw an arrow away and you write leaching and then you got full points. Um, explain, so these explain terms, you tend to go a little bit more in depth than outline. So explain how soil can be viewed as an ecosystem. Uh, so you might remember that ecosystems include both the living and the non-living components. So uh, mentioning both of those would be a good idea. Uh, you might have to compare and contrast the structure and properties of sand, clay, and loam soils. There's some really excellent tables in uh, textbooks and other places that actually break down all of the differences. Pretty easy to review. And then some uh, international references. Uh, and a, once again, a shout out to uh, Mr. Kramer for all of his excellent resources.